Now, I understand that you're using Snowflake for a lot of different applications, but specifically you're doing some powerful stuff with marketing. Can you delve into that a little bit? Give us some of the gritty details. Sure. So for marketing, we um, have a process where we attempt to match names and address for our printed U.S. mail campaigns. Because actually mailing physical letters to people is still a, a huge thing. And it's actually very expensive and it's very painful. It used to be a huge project where basically... We would get a list from a third party, SFTP it to a server, load it into our database, do our best to match it against our own data, generate a delta, download that data, SFTP back. I mean, it's on and on. And due to the size of the data and overall processing, this process kept breaking and always needed babysitting. We would do our best to run it once per quarter. And we all dreaded when we would have to do that because then we have to clear other users to make room for this job. But now using data sharing and bulk data load and unload, we do it all through Snowflake. It doesn't require any engineers to help and it runs weekly. I mean, that's incredible. Going from quarterly to being able to run something weekly. And that is a quantum leap in ability and what you're able to do. No, no. You're really able to accelerate your business. Help me understand, though, who's sharing data with who? We have a number of data vendors sharing data with us that we use to ascertain how good our addresses are from the data shared with us. We are able to learn which users are more likely to sign up for Square. Uh, We have a bunch of machine learning algorithms that run across that data. And then as last step, we actually securely share data with the print house who doesn't have to load a separate list or do any sort of server manipulation, anything like that. They just go directly into Snowflake, select from the table, and that powers their print process. Yeah, that's a great example. Now, This is an example of finding customers, you know, reaching out to customers and uh, landing new customers. But obviously the way the company is set up, you have this, this cluster of services, you know, any individual customer might use all of them. So how do you use data to get a 360 degree view of the customer? Oh, and that's one of the the great, the greatest things about what we have, which is that our analysts are able to, probe into the data constantly and we're able to get unique insights on each seller and able to communicate with each seller taking into account their unique circumstances which services they use which products they subscribe to it's also really great when we're up announcing new updates that will particularly assist some sellers. It's great for our customer success group because when a seller calls in they can look and see instantly which products they're subscribed to which also tells them which ones they might benefit more if they subscribe to something else, you know, for example, CRM. I mean, it has just changed everything. You have your own CRM application, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, That's interesting. So how do you compete against, you know, like uh, Salesforce and people like that? Oh, I would say we're not really competing against Salesforce. What Square is building is more of an ecosystem. Right. So if you have a bunch of customers that have come to your business, you already have, you know, their name and contact information. There's no reason to enter it into a separate system in order to market to them. So what we do is we try and make the marketing to your existing customers or even potential customers super easy. Mm -hmm. We're not in direct competition with Salesforce. That's for certain. It's, it's interesting when I think about Snowflake. I mean, they, they compete with some of the most powerful and dynamic and innovative co- companies in the world. You know, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, just for starters. What's, what do you think is the key for technology companies, for, for, for the younger ones, the ones that are coming up? I mean, Snowflake's no longer a startup, but what's the key to competing with these giants in your view? to never lose your customer focus, to always be obsessive about helping people, to have a, a crazy attention to detail, and always hire great people. Those are always the winning ingredients. It goes right back to Apple, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. 
<laughs> and that's still what they're doing. Right, some good lessons. Yeah, some good lessons learned early. That's great. Now, a lot of your customers are retailers, restaurants, bars, all of the small businesses that have been hit perhaps hardest by COVID. What, what are you seeing? I mean, are they... Are you able to provide any additional help to them or or are you able to get any additional insights that you can use that, you know, oh. that at some point feed back to them and to their benefit? Absolutely. This has been a, a, an enormous success story that when this hit, we actually prepared for everything to dry up, right? Because it looked like this country was shutting down and everything was stopping. And... What that forced us to realize is that we had the ability to put all of these restaurants and stores online very, very quickly, and even to help them arrange to get a uh, delivery or pickup. So that's what we did. And so many stores and restaurants are thankful to Square for pivoting so quickly, enabling them to get online with e-commerce literally in just a matter of hours and start doing pickup like later that day. So that's been a huge success story. That's a very interesting thought because, you know, these local restaurants, these local shops, they don't, they didn't need uh, online. They didn't need e-commerce because their their market was local. Yes. But suddenly they needed something that they had never needed before and they needed it immediately. So I think it's really cool that you guys were able to respond so quickly. I mean, in in my town, I live in a, you know, small city, 130,000 people. The life of the town was these beautiful restaurants and, you know, some of the little shops. All these were owned by individuals or families and things like that. And just, you know, anything that can be done to save these people and their dreams and all the work they've done, I think is just, you know, it's almost like God's work. So I, I really applaud you guys for, for doing that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, I, I have one more question for you, which is I'm, I'm going to ask you to put on your visionary hat and look ahead five years or so, whatever is a convenient time. How do you think business use of cloud data analytics is going to advance over the next five years? Oh, I think it's going to completely change uh, the landscape of, of data. I think data sharing is just the start. I think as companies learn to operate more together and leverage data from each other, it's going to benefit the consumer in ways that we can't even imagine. I mean, just the speed of how things are advancing is just insane. It's really, really hard to predict. I think that there is so much machine learning and AI techniques that can be applied to cloud analytics. We are just in the early days of what can be accomplished. There is so much more to go. Hey, somebody asked me recently, basically, is most of what's in AI these days machine learning, or are there other technologies, other artificial intelligence technologies that are really being used to deal with data? There are, there are definitely other AI technologies that are coming along. You know, we have, we acquired a company, DESA, that created what we call deep fake technology, you know, where they could make a conversation sound like it was coming from anyone, right? That's not machine learning. That's clearly AI. And we are using those learnings to try and improve fraud because I can foresee a day when someone is going to call up the bank and pretend they are me. And we need to be able to detect that. So that's voice recognition then? That is voice recognition, voice yeah. generation. Yeah. Yeah. When I think about the future of AI, I mean, I think, once again, there are wonders when you think about all the new capabilities. There are also, you know, ever since computing and certainly since the advent of, of AI domains and disciplines, there's always a concern, you know, they're going to take our jobs, these kinds of things. How do you see kind of people and AI coexisting in the world? I think that AI is eventually going to be our greatest friend and a greatest advocate because the, the machines have no reason to help one person over another. Talk about 
you know, lack of racism, lack of ageism, genderism, sexism, any of those things. Uh, machines are completely, you know, impartial uh, across all those things. I don't, I don't see them taking our jobs. I see them giving us new opportunities, new jobs to do. I'm actually very bullish on the prospects for the human race. Yeah. I'm very happy to hear that. In the midst of this crisis, it's sometimes easy to get de depressed or anxious. It but sure is. <laughs> I, I, I'm like you. I'm, I'm a technology optimist. I think we really, we need technology innovations to really achieve the kind of progress that society needs to achieve. You look at it now, it's, it's healthcare, it's, you know, it's income and, and wealth inequity. I mean, mm -hmm. Somehow that has to be addressed too. And I, I do think that the technology has a role in that area as well. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, Randy, it's been great talking to you today. Uh, you know, you know, thanks so much for your time. Uh, your stories get better every time I hear them. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah. And I love what you said about innovation and how the kind of the, the lessons that you learned at Apple are still the lessons that the great companies practice and that square practices, I think that's really important for, for people to take to heart. And also, I thought your insights about, you know, using data for marketing, about sharing data, uh, about the 360 view of your customer, and certainly about how Square has been helping its small businesses survive this COVID. I think that's really inspiring. So, Thank you so much, and uh, it's great talking to you again, and I hope to maybe we'll meet again in person. <laughs> I hope we do. This episode is brought to you by Snowflake. Register for Snowflake's first full-day virtual conference, Data Cloud Summit 2020. Engage with thousands of your peers in any of the eight business and technology summit tracks presented by technology experts and industry data leaders. Be there for the announcement of Snowflake's latest innovations and get access to never-before-seen demos and customer case studies. Register for free at snowflake.com slash summit.